was born in London, Mylan Hospital. Um, at the moment, I'm an early years teacher. I've been an early years teacher now for 20 years. I studied at the London Met, done my BA degree honours. Um, and I work at the Frampton Park Preschool, where I'm the manager there as well. I manage four staff and I have 25 children. <laughs> Hard work, but it's, it's good. I like it. Um, I'm going to apply very soon to become an Ofsted inspector. Um, yeah, that's me. Oh, my background. My parents are from Barbados. Um, both of my parents are late now. Um, I've been to Barbados probably about ten times, probably. Um, yeah. I've, oh, I have three children, two boys and one girl. And um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> And my background of cancer, um, my dad died from lung cancer in 2011 and his two brothers died of cancer as well. Um, but you don't ever think that you're going to get cancer, it's just something you just don't think about. But um, I developed cancer in December 2015 um, and my mum died November 2015 and my brother died May 2014. So um, there, there was a lot of stress going on there. Um, regarding the, the, can, the breast cancer, I, when we were going through, it was a hard time when my mum was dying, when I mean, she was very ill in hospital, I'm running backwards and forwards from work to the hospital. It was like that sort of thing. And um, uh, I felt very tired, obviously it would be tiring um, emotionally and physically, but um, it was a little bit, the tiredness was a little bit different, but I just didn't take any notice of it because of what was going on in the background. And um, I did feel a pain on, my, on the side of my right breast, um, but I didn't take any notice because I was more concentrating on my mum because she was dying. And um, I just said, oh, my, my daughter says to him, Mum, you should go to the doctor and have it look. And I said, no, nah, it'll go away. It was just, it was coming and going. So, but I just didn't take a lot of notice. And um, after we buried Mum and everything, um, we, we're now in December, because she died in November. And um, I went to the steam bath, because I was feeling really depressed. I felt stressed and everything, just burying mum two weeks before. And um, I said, let me just go to the steam bath just to relax a little bit. And um, I was having a shower and everything. And um, I felt something in my breast, it's the size of a pea. And I said, oh, what's this? Hmm. And um, I said, I might as well go to the doctor. I went to the doctor the day after. And um, I just said to her, I have concerns. I felt, I'm sure I felt something in my breast. I'm a little bit concerned, could you examine me? And she did, and she just said to me, I think she said she thinks she could feel something, but she said just to be on the safe side, she said, um, I'll write a letter to the hospital, I'll refer you. So she did that, and within about a week, I received an appointment from Homerton. And um, yeah, so I had a mammogram done, and, um, she, then the, and then the results came back. I had two lumps in my breast. Um, the smaller one was benign, the larger one was um, cancerous. And um, I said, okay, because I seem to think that, that once you've been diagnosed that you have breast cancer, I think that if you're positive in the beginning, I think that helps you. Um, so then I had to go through for my biopsy, had the biopsy done, then I had to wait for the results because it was Christmas holiday then. So I had to wait for two weeks when everybody was back to work. Um, that was a bit daunting, <laughs> waiting that long, but that's how it goes. And um, yeah, the results came back, uh, they told me I'm stage two. And um, so I just said, okay, so what now? Because I seem, I'm the type of person where it's already there, it's happened. It's no use sitting down crying. I mean, everyone's different, but this is me. It's no use sitting down crying or one, oh, oh, why me? Why is it? 
that's not going to solve anything. You have to say, what's come, all right, what next? And um, yeah, then after the biopsy, then they said to me, I have to have um, chemo. No, sorry, I had the operation. Yeah, I had a lumpectomy done. Um, after I had the lumpectomy, then I had to wait about two weeks or so before my chemo started. And um, yeah, so then after that, two weeks after that, chemo was done. After two weeks after chemo, I had radiotherapy. Radiotherapy is a lot easier than chemo, but you think it's easier, but it is doing something to your body because you don't feel anything, but it is working. And they were nice as well, the radiotherapy team, very nice. And um, half the radiotherapy is over. Then you have to um, start getting your life back on track. I mean, I was away for work for a year. Um, but it's a lot of building up after you finish chemo and radiotherapy because your body has been through, it's like it's been battered, put it that way. Yeah, you just got to try and get your life back on track. And, um, and having family support is very important as well. My three children, were, they were excellent. It was hard on really, I know it was hard on them because they just buried Nan. And they went through all that with Nan. And then after, straight after Nan, then it was me. Um, but they were very, very good. They were very good with me. And um, family unit is, it's, it's very important. And it's a good support team at the hospital as well. That really helps you as well. Um, at first, I didn't want to tell anybody I had breast cancer. When I was first diagnosed, my auntie, because all my family was there, came with me for, um, for, the, dis um, for the results. And um, my auntie said to me, don't tell anybody you've got cancer. Because my auntie's in her 70s, and in her era, you don't talk about cancer. Because I know back in the day when I was growing up, people had cancer, but there's something, it's like a taboo, you just do not talk about it. So she said to me, don't tell anybody you've got cancer, just keep it to yourself. But I said, no, I'm going to tell people I've got breast cancer. I mean, at first, I did keep it to myself, first few weeks or so. I said, no, maybe I shouldn't. Because I think I had to, I had to, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Um, I had to chew it over myself before I could tell anybody. Um, but eventually I did tell everyone that I've got breast cancer and you've got what? It was that sort of thing. Oh no, oh no. How did you get breast cancer? I said, um, that's a good question. If everybody knew how they got cancer, but you just don't know. It could be anything. Um, my diet was good. I exercise. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I'm very religious. Um, but you just don't know. But it could be hereditary. You just don't know how you get cancer. Um, I think it's very important to be open to people because it helps you as well. And plus it helps other people to get, because you, because you want to get the message across. Um, so you have to be open because it's a good way of healing yourself, healing yourself within, because you're talking about it and you're, um, I'm trying to get it out there to, especially to women. I know men can get breast cancer as well, but especially women, I was trying to get, you know, make sure you do your checks, make sure you, you, you um, go for your breast screening. It's very important um, because regarding breast screening, I did not go to mine. I went to one when I was 50. The second one, I did not go to it. Um, so I tell everybody, make sure you go to your breast screening because um, early detection, it's, it's better when it's detected early. So, so it's, it's, it's good to get out there and be open to people because you're helping other people as well. And plus you're helping yourself to heal as well. Because being lonely, it's not good. Just staying by yourself in the house, thinking about it. And it, takes, it takes longer to get to heal. And you're trying to get your life back on track. So if you just lock yourself away from people, and it's not going to help you in the long run. You, get, you go through depression, because some people get depressed after cancer, after all the treatment, 
but you, 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 that road, you don't want to go down that road. So it's best to be open to people and don't lock yourself away. Um, make friends, talk about it, um, you know, bring it out into the open, don't be ashamed. Even when I lost my hair, I didn't wear a wig or anything. I just walked down the road with my, with my bald head. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I learned how to tie a scarf. <laughs> I learned that very well. <laughs> um, but especially in the summertime, I said, no, I'm not, not, I'm not covering myself away. Yes, I, I had breast cancer. Oh, I've got breast cancer. Yes, I'm, you know, be open because it helps you as well. And it will help other people as well. And what I would say to women is that um, I think your first breast screening is at 50, I think it is, between 50 and 70. And, um, but I think, but I would say to them that if you have any concerns, if you feel any way, if you're not sure about anything, because um, the only thing I knew about breast cancer, to be honest, is that if you find a lump in your breast, that's the only thing I knew. Um, but I've learned now that um, if you feel that if you get a pain that wouldn't go away, that's a sign. Um, look at the, the, the coloration of your nipple, that's another sign. If your nipple becomes inverted, uh, that's another sign. If you um, check your armpits, if the skin under your armpits looks different, or if you feel a lump under there, that's another sign. Or if you've got information coming from your nipples, all that sort of thing. If you notice anything like that, you should go and see your GP straight away. But, but, um, but regarding breast screening, I think every woman should go for their breast screen, sc screening. Even if you don't want to wait till you're 50, when you get to about 45, probably, just go to your GP and say, just ask for one. I'm sure they wouldn't say no. Um, and do your checks. Make sure you do your checks as well. If you don't know how to do your checks, you can go to your GP, go to your nearest health centre. They'll show you how to do things like that. But if you're worried about anything, the first thing to do is go and see your GP and don't delay. And, um, and look for signs as well. I know some people don't have any signs, but you should know your body. If you know your body and your body feels different, something's wrong, go and see your GP. I think, if you, I think doing research is very good, but I think if, even if you go and see your Macmillan nurses, because they're very good, they're very, very good, they were really good to me. And, um, or like, go, you could join a group if you're worried about chemo or, you know, I'm sure they'll give you, you know, you'll get information, you'll talk to people that actually, actually been there. And, um, and don't, you know, don't be afraid because you've got to remember these medicines, these treatments are here to help you because you want to live um, beyond five years. You want to live. So um, if you're, you know, just, just, just don't be worried. Just be open about everything. Don't lock yourself away. Don't keep everything to yourself. If, you're not, if you've got concerns, if you're worried about anything or if you're scared about the chemo or whatever, just get information. Just join the group, do research, go and see a Macmillan nurse, talk to your, talk to your GP. Um, I just say don't, don't be scared because um, it's not nice, the chemo is not nice, but it helps you and you want to live, you want life. So, um, and you want to get back out there. So, just do it. <laughs> I do, I do, um, I do think about it a lot and um, I must say if, if I'm watching a programme where someone's having chemo, it does make me feel sick, it really does, I could actually feel that I'm going to be sick, um, I can't look at it, um, but, but looking back at it in another way, um, it was a journey, it was a very hard journey. Um, it was very hard on my children. Um, I'm here. I'm here and 
I actually look back at my diary, read my diary, the one that I wrote, what I was writing when I was at home, and I said, oh yeah, oh yeah, I used to do that, oh yeah, yeah. You, know, you look back at it and um, you, you, yeah, you do remember a lot of things and um, certain songs that I actually hear now, it sort of takes me back to last year, because last year is when I had all my treatment. And then I said, oh yeah, oh gosh, that reminds me, yeah, when I was at home. And um, certain smells as well takes me back to there, because certain smells brings, because smell, you know, smells is very important as well, and certain smells takes me back to there as well. Um, because when you're on chemo, certain smells you, you can't smell, because your nose, your nose can't take it. Um, so certain smells takes me back to last year as well. And, um, and my children and I, we usually sit down and talk about, about last year. Oh, Mum, do you remember when you was always in bed? And I said, yeah, I know, I remember. But I said, I'm here. Um, oh, and my daughter would say, do you remember, Mum, I took you out to, to dinner when you, had, you didn't, didn't have no hair? I said, yeah, I know, I remember the restaurant we went to. And it's that sort of thing, you know, that, you know, but... Um, it was a journey, but I'm here. I'm getting there every day. Every day is a blessing for me. Every day is life for me. Um, I'm getting over the fatigue now because when you finish radiotherapy and that, the fatigue is really awful afterwards. Um, the fatigue comes back to me now and again, but. Um, it's, it's getting better, put it that way. I'm getting stronger every day. Um, my eating patterns are still not back to how it was. Um, but my hair is growing just a little bit now. Still got patches, but, uh, but I think life is more important. I'm here, I'm not worried about the hair or anything like that. It's life is that's more important. But um, I'm feeling stronger every day. As my son said to me, coming here, the was on their way here, he said, Mum, you're doing so well. He says, you're, you, he says, Mum, you're just doing so well. So all my friends said that you look so good. You're, you're looking strong. He says, Mum, I'm proud of you. And I said, oh, thank you. 